Good afternoon. Um, it's 50 years since the cinematic release of uh, 2001, the uh, movie. Uh, it was back in 2001 that I first started working with VR. Um, VR was a specialist technology then, and I set up a very specialist lab. Um, back then, the film seemed sort of very uh, prescient about its warnings about the uh, troublesome nature of technology. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. So that face <laughs> is something that I, I managed to perfect back in, in 2001. <laughs> that was the face I most often had. Um, but actually, the kit was a lot better than the original kit, which is the Sword of Damocles, which is uh, 1960s MIT uh, design there. Um, what you need to remember about VR is that it's changed hugely in the past two to three years. We have, thanks to the investment of global companies such as Oculus and uh, Facebook um, and, and Microsoft and Sony, is consumer kit now. It's extraordinary uh, what you can do with VR now. So I'll show you a clip of one of my research assistants in one of our offices at the University of Oxford trying VR, walking the plank. I know how to treat my team. Um, <laughs> the beauty of VR for mental health has been known for 20 years. The beauty is that you put the headset on, you know it's a simulation, you can go back into situations you wouldn't in real life because you know it's a simulation. But the learning you make transfers to the real world. This is the beauty of VR for mental health. But what I'm trying to do is exploit the new advantages of this new software and hardware. And the, the excitement I think that we have is that it's potential now to automate the delivery of psychological therapy with VR using a virtual coach that would drain that. You can make it hugely compelling and fun, more compelling than jumping off a ledge like that. And actually, what the end result is, I think you can do, is to deliver really high quality uh, psychological therapy that transforms lives of millions more people through VR. Um, so, what we're doing now, in fact, is putting VR into NHS clinics. We're starting to run it in trials, but we're also even taking the equipment home. It's that good as a consumer device now, and it's getting a lot better. So to support all that work, uh, we've set up a University of Oxford spin-out company called Oxford VR. Um, Barnaby Perks, who have actually spoken about earlier, is leading us forward at uh, uh, an extraordinary pace, actually. Uh, this list of people involved is uh, growing practically daily, so this is out of date already. But what Barnaby has encouraged us to do, which is brilliant, is bring in a lot of people from the games industry. So our programming capabilities have shot up, certainly in the last few months. Um, whoops. What we did when we first started Oxford VR, because no one had automated the provision of psychological through, therapy through VR, because they just had a therapist there delivering it, what they did, what we did, is develop a virtual coach. This is Nick. Um, we put her rapidly through clinical psychology training. Um, <laughs> you can hear a bit of her now. This is program from, programming from two years ago. It's a pleasure to meet you. You'll have noticed the screen hovering around. It'll display information about what you're doing and help you track your progress. The first task we asked In this to... program, oh. you're going to try <laughs> a series of tasks each session should last around 20 to 30 minutes. Um, the first task we gave Nick was to uh, treat fear of heights. We did that because it's a very common problem, uh, but also because even if you don't have a fear of heights, if you try out this programming, you kind of feel the height. Um, so 
This is the center where she does her treatment. Take as much time as you like to look around. You'll find there's something happening on every floor. Right up to the very top of the building. Not to mention our floating whale, Wilbur. <laughs> This building has 10 floors. Imagine you're standing on a balcony overlooking the atrium. On which floor do you think you'd experience a moderate level of anxiety? And then you choose which floor to start on and you go up there and Nick is there by your side coaching you through. The view from here is amazing, isn't it? Before we do anything else, Spend some time observing what's going on around you. On the upper floors, in the atrium, and straight ahead. And we give people tasks that really push the boundaries of their confidence around height. So this one is going out rescuing a cat is meowing through it. Mm. So actually in this version, um, the cat can be dropped so there can be um, <laughs> catastrophes from time to time. Um, we reported earlier this year uh, on the trial in the Lancet psychiatry of this intervention. So it's a pre-registered trial, um, 100 patients of severe fear of heights. Most the average length of uh, fear of heights was 30 years. They received the VR treatment, typically two hours in VR, uh, or they carried on as usual. Uh, they were assessed over a couple of months. Uh, we got 100% follow-up. Um, the results this is very clear, the VR treatment group uh, reduced hugely where the control group stays the same. An average reduction in fear of heights of 68%, effect size of two, number needed to treat to half fear of heights is 1.3. It's extraordinarily good. You don't actually need the stats to, to see this change. And actually, when you see people doing the treatment, you see the change. So I'll show you a couple of videos um, of people who, before and after, have had the treatment. This is Richard, and he's been asked to go to the um, balcony in the shopping centre. Yeah. It's tough. And therapy is tough too. This is after therapy. <laughs> this, um, this would have been simply impossible three months ago. Uh, the, it would have been total avoidance. I, I wouldn't even have attempted this. And the next person I'll show you is, is Faye. Um, less severe fear of heights, but it meant that actually going on elevators was very difficult for her. She'd avoid that because she'd fear falling. This is before therapy. Yeah, see, I can't do it. You've now completed all the tasks. Therapy done in half a day. Do you feel safer around heights than you did when you first arrived on this floor? Fine. I can't believe it. It's really, really weird. It's fine. I don't even need to hold on. <laughs> That's so weird. But Barnaby has been building up this company. Our programming has all changed. The team has changed. We've reprogrammed the coach. So Nick has retired. 
<laughs> um, been using uh, film studios to do the motion capture of the, of the therapist. It's relatively easy with the therapist. It's harder with the cat to do this work. <laughs> uh, here's a snapshot of the latest uh, version of the Fear of Heights programming. Wow. Look at this apple tree. What I'd like you to do is pick eight apples. More, if you'd like. So, Fear of Heights really is a, is a demonstrator. Um, we're interested in many other types of mental health conditions, and one of the big projects we're doing now is Game Change. Um, this is funded by the NIHR Mental Health Challenge Award, um, and what we want to do is put highly effective automated VR treatment into services for people with psychosis. That's the challenge that we've taken on in this project. Um, we're working with about a dozen different organizations, including MindTech, Oxford VR, the Royal College of Art, and the McPin Foundation and other trusts. Uh, there's a lot of people involved. Uh, the applicant team alone had a dozen people. Uh, it's been a joy working with the MindTech team, actually Chris Hollis and Sue Brown, Jen Martin and Mike Craven. It's been a joy and also in education uh, working with them. Uh, the team is growing. This is the current group of people working on it, but it's about to double over the next year because we're doing a lot in this project. Um, at the heart of it, really, what we're trying to treat is the social withdrawal, which is, has such terrible consequences for people with psychosis. So many of our patients still have residual problems. They have paranoia or voices or social anxiety and depression. Therefore, they're frightened in everyday situations and they withdraw, as people do when they're anxious. And, of course, that has... Uh, serious consequences, including that actually our patients are often at home, stuck inside sedentary, friendship networks often collapse, uh, and uh, patients actually in this group die 14 years average uh, younger than other people. So we want to reverse this social withdrawal by using this powerful VR automated therapy. Um, there's four main work streams. We're spending a year completely redeveloping the programming, working a lot with uh, patients. That's run by the Royal College of Art Design Unit. We're looking at implementation through MindTech, a leading on barriers and facilitators and lots of other work. We're going to do a large clinical trial, and we're also, uh, and through Mike, working on the rollout strategy to actually uh, figure out how services will actually carry on to use this treatment. Uh, the trial is going to start in July next year, uh, 432 people with psychosis in several centres across England. Um, the wonderful McPin Foundation are helping support our patient involvement. We've run, uh, the project's been running six months. We've had uh, 20 workshops, over 500 hours of direct patient input, particularly at the moment, into the design of the treatment. Doing a lot of user-centred work with this. Um, and just to finish off a, moment, a sneak preview, the, the patients have been telling us what everyday situations they want to be able to manage. The ones they've particularly highlighted for us are going to a cafe, going to a pub, getting on a bus, being in the local street, going to a news agent and um, a GP surgery. I'll give you a very sneak preview of some of the very early stage builds of these environments, um, which have been uh, worked on through Oxford VR, but also a lot through patients saying what they want. So this is going to be the cafe, and you can imagine the people, no avatars in it yet, we can imagine the avatars sitting uh, at the back there looking at your, as you're at the counter. Um, I'll give you a little video of the, of the street. So this will be populated, there'll be avatars coming around the corner, there'll be cars going down the street. So um, this actually for patients who are fearful of others doing bad things to that happening to them can be very anxiety provoking. And another snapshot. This one is a situation that can be very different from our patient, difficult for a patient group. Uh, GP surgeries. This is going to be a VR rec recreation, recreation of uh, GP surgery. There'll be people there, and in the task, you'll have to go up and you know, interact with the receptionist and give some personal information, things that our patient group actually find rather difficult. So this is very early stage programming, but uh, we're 
very excited about the way it's looking. Um, so in summary, in Game Change, what we want to do is to show that automated, high-quality psychological therapy can really help uh, patients with psychosis re-engage uh, with the world. Um, we also uh, hope that it will prove to be something that services actually uh, will want implemented and implement. And we also hope that this is a model for the development of VR for other mental health difficulties. So I'll stop there.